Hi, let's talk about pelvic autonomics. In this video, we'll discuss the basics of the autonomic supply to the pelvis. So as you may recall, the, uh, the pelvic viscera are autonomically supplied by the inferior hypogastric plexus, which is a mixed autonomic plexus. We can see the inferior hypogastric plexus here as a meshwork of fibers that are highlighted green to represent both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers. It's important to realize that that meshwork of fibers is going to extend over the viscera of the pelvis as well. So there's going to be uh, a vesicle plexus associated with the bladder, a uterovaginal plexus associated with the uterus and vagina, a rectal or middle rectal plexus associated with the rectum, and also a prostatic plexus associated with the prostate. Now let's take a look at some of the inputs for the inferior hypogastric plexus or communications for the, uh, the plexus. There are a couple of different sources. Let's, uh, let's keep the uh, hypogastric nerves in our mind. They are cut here, but what these are are condensations of both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers that are entering and leaving the pelvis and they communicate the superior hypogastric plexus and the inferior hypogastric plexus. So those hypogastric nerves really talk between those two plexuses, both in and out of the pelvis. Now specifically within the pelvis, there are going to be branches from ventral primary rami of S2, 3, and 4. We can see the, uh, the VPRs here are in yellow. So there is S1, S2, S3, and S4. And coming off of S2 here, we see this very nice blue branch. That is a pelvic splanchnic nerve. Coming off of S4 here, we can see this blue branch, which kind of runs by S3 and heads down to the inferior hypogastric plexus. These are the pelvic splanchnic nerves. And I remember that pelvic splanchnics are parasympathetics. Some of these fibers um, of the pelvic splanchnic nerves um, can travel to the hindgut either through the superior hypogastric plexus, um, so by means of those hypogastric nerves, or they can independently travel um, up to the hindgut uh, independently of those uh, hypogastric nerves. In terms of the sympathetic inputs, we need to look at the sacral sympathetic trunk, which is highlighted in orange here. There are various ganglia of the trunk. So there we can see the ganglion of one and two and a slight one of three there. And um, typically it's branches from the first two ganglia here that are the sacral splanchnics, but we actually have branches from S2 and S3. And these are examples of sacral splanchnic nerves. And I remember that as sacral splanchnic is sympathetic. So inputs, hypogastric nerves, mixed, pelvic splanchnics, parasympathetics, sacral splanchnics, sympathetics. In terms of the targets of these, uh, this plexus, We'll have a vesicle plexus serving the urinary bladder, um, a prostatic plexus, which would serve if it were present here, a prostate gland, and it is not present here, a uterovaginal plexus serving the uterus and vagina, and a rectal plexus serving the rectum and um, anal canal. In terms of the functions of this autonomic regulation, 
they're rather straightforward. So in terms of parasympathetic stimuli, we'll have contraction of the smooth muscle of the bladder and the rectum. Um, parasympathetics generally are um, vasodilators. So the vasodilation as a result of parasympathetic uh, stimulation leads to tumescence. So that's the engorgement of the erectile tissues. And that can further lead to um, erection. There's also the initiation of glandular secretions. So these are um, uh, stimulatory of glands as well. The sympathetic responses, so the, uh, the fight or flight response, uh, vasoconstriction, that's, that's a very common sympathetic response. The inhibition of rectal or anal smooth muscle contraction, um, as well as the inhibition of bladder muscle um, contraction. Um, the initiation of emission, so this is going to to stimulate the secretion of fluid from seminal vesicles um, into the urethra. It's also going to um, be stimulatory of the smooth muscle of the uterus and uh, genital organs, uh, helping uh, to, uh, to produce ejaculation. This is done in conjunction with somatomotor innervation, um, e.g. from the pudendal nerve. So sympathetics and somatic motor um, help to uh, stimulate ejaculation. In terms of the general visceral afferent uh, fibers, recall there are two general types. And up until this point, our discussions have been uh, fairly straightforward. So those GVA fibers that travel along with the parasympathetic um, fibers are, are typically serving autonomic reflexes. And uh, the general visceral afferent fibers that travel with the sympathetics are serving visceral pain. So this isn't the same thing as somatic pain. This is sensing uh, distension, uh, stretching, uh, tearing. Um, it's very poorly localized um, and generally referred to to, um, to certain regions. Now there's something called the, uh, the pelvic pain line and the, uh, the pelvic pain line corresponds with the inferior margin of the peritoneum. And so anything above the pelvic pain line, general visceral afferent fibers travel with sympathetics Anything below the pelvic pain line, those general visceral afferent fibers travel with the parasympathetic fibers. So that's, that's something new for us. Um, and uh, referred pain from visceral organs can refer to a variety of places, but um, generally um, that referred pain is more uh, suprapubic in nature. Again, but still very poorly localized. So we've discussed the, uh, the autonomics of the, the pelvis and the various inputs to the inferior hypogastric plexus, as well as the various autonomic plexus targets of that inferior hypogastric plexus, as well as the, uh, the general visceral afferent fibers pathways. This is your summary slide. Thank you for your time.